Fifth Row Center. It's another gala premiere today in WGN's Michigan Boulevard Playhouse as we present the charming young French star, Simone Simone, in a delightful romantic comedy, Model Princess. Miss Simone is not only won international fame as a screen actress, but she is also appearing at present in a delightful new musical comedy, Three After Three, now playing at the Erlanger Theater in Chicago. It's a sellout house here in the studio again today, but the best seats in the theater are always yours in Fifth Row Center. the lights are being dimmed, and before the first act curtain, we've just time to tell you that supporting Simone Simone in this afternoon's play is a fine cast of famous players, including Olin Soleil, Louise Barclay, Brett Morrison, Rene Rodier, and Willard Waterman. Our drama, Model Princess, was written by Noel B. Gerson. Harold Stokes conducts the orchestra, and the production is directed by Blair Walliser. And now, there's the curtain, and the show is on. first scene takes place in the busy newsroom of a metropolitan newspaper in a great American seaport. The city editor is speaking. Marley. Joe Marley. Yeah, I'm Joe, come here. What? I got a peach of a story for you. Uh, another debutante drinking champagne out of whatever debutantes drink champagne out of. No, no, no. This is a real story. Mm. Look, take a photographer down with you and go to the docks for the President Van Buren, his doctor. His Highness, the famous Prince Paul, is on board with his new bride. She's a French gal, apparently. Uh, we don't know much about it. In fact, I didn't even know the prince was married, so it sounds like it ought to be a good yarn. Do either of them speak English, or do I use sign language? Ah, you find that out for yourself. Okay, sunshine. I wish I was back at police court. We could always get a story out of the judge. And maybe a free lunch, too. And now we move to the salon of Madame Tourney, one of the city's most famous dress designers. Madame Tourney is sitting in her office, working when the door opens. You called for me, madame? Oh, Rochelle, yes. Sit down, please. Merci, madame. Rochelle, you have been working here as a model for a long time? Oui, madame, for three years. Ever since I came over here from Paris. You enjoyed your work? Oh, but I have, madame. I would rather work here and wear your wonderful clothes than anywhere else in the whole world. Oh, madam, you are not going... Oh, no, no, Rochelle. I am not going to let my most attractive model go. I'd be a fool if I did anything as stupid as that. I, uh, well, I don't quite know how to explain this to you. I have a very unusual job for you. That is, if you care to take it. Oh, we are going to have a side show at a racetrack or something? No, <laughs> no. Please understand, my dear. If you don't want to do this, it will be perfectly all right with me. I understand, madam. Well, let me begin at the beginning, then. A very important ambassador is sitting in the next room. An ambassador? Yes. He saw your picture in one of the magazines the other day, and he thinks you can help his country. Prince Paul, who is the heir to the throne, is arriving here today on a goodwill trip. Oh, yes, I know. I read all about him. He plays polo, and he's very handsome... And he speaks five languages. And, of course, he's very rich. How would you like to be the princess? I? <laughs> oh, excuse me, please, madam. But now you joke me with kidding. Uh, I am being very serious. The prince and his advisors decided that without a wife, he would become entangled with too many romantic young American girls. You know, wanted to marry him. And besides, a wife will help convince our businessmen that the prince is solid and serious. You are young and charming, and you are beautiful. And, of course, you can wear clothes, or you would not be here at Madame Tournay's. 
They have already announced that the princess is with Paul. But it is not so. There is no one. And that is why they come to you. The ambassador will pay you $10,000 if you will pretend to be the princess for a few weeks. He will take you out to the ship in a special cutter and you will start at once. Do you want to do it? Oh, but I cannot. To be alone with a man. Oh, oh what would my friends think of Oh, me? there is nothing to fear. You will be quite safe. Prince Paul is a gentleman and this is a business agreement. But everyone will know it was I. Not at all. We will change your makeup, your hairstyle, your whole appearance. People who have seen your picture in the fashion magazines won't recognize you. And neither with your friends. You will be a new person. The Princess Bebe. I, Rochelle Gabby, a princess? Oui, Your Highness. No, Your Highness. Oh, yes, madame, I will do it. Where is that ambassador? Your princess is coming, Prince Charming. You're doing beautifully, Rochelle. You could not have done better if you'd been born a princess. Oh, these past three days have just been like a dream. Sometimes I can close my eyes and almost imagine that I am a princess. And when I open them and see a room as big as this one, I know I must be at least a duchess. <laughs> Is this the grand ballroom of the hotel? Do they hold big meetings here? Oh, this is just a royal suite. I wonder. Do they think kings and queens and princesses are bigger than other people? <laughs> The rooms are always so much larger. Uh, this afternoon may be rather difficult for you. It'll be the first time you see a member of the press alone. It'll be difficult for you, too. Going to start building a new embassy and making a big speech. Uh, this won't be a novel experience for me, my dear. I've had enough experience with cornerstones to be an expert stonemason by this time. I've been making speeches since I was ten years old. Yes, and it'll be very boring for you. But I am enjoying myself. And I'm going to enjoy the interview today. I hope. Now, just remember this. If you get into difficulty, a member of the staff will be in the next room. I will remember. <laughs> Mr. Joseph Morley of the Star Express is here by appointment to see Her Highness. You may show him in. Are you leaving, Your Highness? Yes, I must go. And do your best. Oh, dear. I shall try very hard. Adieu, Paul. Adieu. Entree. Uh, Your Highness, uh, I'm Joe Morley, the Star Express. How do you do? Will you not come in? Uh, thanks. Please sit down. Well, uh, <clears throat> maybe you can tell I'm a little bit on the edgy side. You see, this is the first time I've ever interviewed a princess. How nice. We're starting together, then. This is the first time I have been interviewed alone by a newspaper reporter. It is? Yes. I mean, you see, the first time in your country. Oh, oh. <laughs> didn't quite get you there for a minute. Well, then, shall we begin? Mm-hmm. Have you been a reporter very long? Well, almost five years now. Do you enjoy your work? Yeah, pretty well. But I'd like to get away from this sort of stuff. You know, I don't like to pry into other people's lives. Well, what would you like to do? Well, I own some property up in Vermont. I'd like to go up there and live. Ah, oh, it's wonderful up there in the winter. Everything, as far as you can see, is all still and white and sparkling. It's cold outside and warm inside and crisp everywhere. That sounds enchanting. Yeah. Yeah, but that's the whole trouble. It's too good. I'll never get there. Well, why not? Well, I can't go up alone. I'm not married. I don't even know any girl who'd want to bury herself up in the Vermont hills with me. I should think any girl would love living that kind of a life. You do? Of course I do. Well, why can't you find the right girl? You tell me, sister. Deb, I beg your pardon, Your Highness. I... <laughs> oh, that's all right. Oh, really? I'm terribly sorry. Well, don't apologize. I'm okay with that crack. Yeah. Hey, wait a minute. What kind of an interview is this, anyway? You're asking me all the questions. Now then, what about you? Oh, there's nothing very remarkable about me. I was born in Paris, 
And I lived there most of my life, and uh, here I am. Mm. You're being rather modest. No, that's all there is to me. Yeah, well, that isn't every girl who marries a prince and will someday be a queen. Not every girl wants to be a princess or a queen. No? What do they want? Maybe they would like to live on a farm in, in Vermont. Uh-huh. Okay, kid me if you want to, but I'm going to use that in my story anyway. Princess would prefer life on simple farm. Now, you are kidding me. No, not a chance. Uh, tell me, Princess, uh, you don't mind my getting personal. Uh, how'd you happen to fall for his nibs? Uh, I mean, Prince Paul. Oh, uh, I am... Um, the, um, the, the prince is... Oh, I'm sorry, doggone there. I go pulling another boner. Please forgive me. I, uh... I imagine it's pretty hard for a girl not to fall in love with a man as good-looking as Prince Paul. Mm, there's nothing to forgive. Well, I've taken up enough of your time, Princess. Thanks for the interview and uh, for everything. It's, uh, really, it's been swell. Perhaps we shall meet again. No, not much chance. We live in different worlds, Princess. Perhaps they are not as far apart as you think. The life of a princess is not very different from that of a, a closed murder. Yeah. Well, that's a neat way of putting it, anyway. Well, so long. Why, why don't you come to dinner with us? Me? Hmm. Why not? Well, why not? Meet us here at 8 o'clock. Well, won't his nibs, uh, I mean, won't the prince be sore? Oh, I don't think so. He's very wide-minded. Oh. At 8. At 8. <laughs> Beautifully, Princess. I love to walk with you. It's been a wonderful evening, Your Highness. Oh, please don't call me that. Why don't you just call me Rochelle? Hmm? I thought your name was Baby. Oh, oh yes. Oh, well, my, my friends all call me Rochelle. Oh. Am I a friend? I hope so. Oh, God, you know, I wish you weren't a princess. Married to a prince. Why do you wish something like that? Well, it puts limitations on friendship. You mean you would like me better, maybe if I if I were a shop girl or an airplane stewardess or or a model? <laughs> maybe you speak with an accent, Rochelle, but you sure do get the dress. <laughs> we dance together as though we had done it always. Let's keep right on dancing. The music is stopped. It sort of has. I wonder why they stopped in the middle of the... Hey, look. What's happening? It's a phone. Oh, hey, this isn't so good. Look at those flames. Come on. Hey, this is a stampede. Are you all right, Michelle? Well, hang on to me. I'll get you out of here. Oh! What's the matter? Oh, my ankle. Oh! Can't you walk? Where you going? No, 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 not a chance. If we get out of this inferno, we'll get out together. Here, here, put your arms around my neck. Up. All right. Hang on, kid. Here we go. Are you all right? We're safe. We're out. I'll say something. Please, uh, are you ill or what's wrong? Oh, darling. Darling. Give her air. She's faded, buddy. You called me uh, darling. Are you all right? You saved my life, and you called me darling. I called you... Oh, I'm sorry. That was a pretty rotten thing to do. I keep forgetting you're married to the prince. I was holding in my arms. I lost track of things, I suppose. Please, don't think too badly of me. Whatever I think of you, and I shall think many things, it'll never be that. I promise you. Our scene again changes.